Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 15 of Learn Lightroom 6, also known as Lightroom CC. In this episode, we're going to learn how to create and use watermarks in Lightroom. Now, I must confess that I rarely use watermarks myself. And generally speaking, it's frowned upon to use a watermark on an image unless it's absolutely needed. There are some times, though, that I recommend a photographer use a watermark. One good example would be a wedding photographer. You just shot a wedding, and you're going to put those images on Facebook. Well, there's two reasons why you would want to watermark them. First reason would be free advertising. We're anticipating that the wedding party, people that went to the wedding, people that didn't make it to the wedding, friends and relatives, they're all going to view these images and hopefully share them with all their friends. So this really helps get your name out there. Watermark those images. The second reason is more monetary. On Facebook, anyone could download an image and print it themselves or send it off to you know Walgreens and get printed. And you'd want to dissuade them from doing that. You would much prefer that they come to you to purchase the image. So having your watermark on there helps dissuade them from printing the image themselves. So that's just one example where a, photo, a photographer should use a watermark. And in Lightroom, it's very easy to use watermarks. The first thing you have to do is create a watermark. And to do that, I'm using a Mac. I would go up to this top menu where it says Lightroom. If you're using a PC, it's under Edit. And what we're looking for is the menu choice Edit Watermarks. And you'll see the Watermark Editor pops up. And by default, it shows a very simple watermark with the copyright symbol and your name. Now you could use that if you so choose, or you could edit it. And what I'm going to show you to do is how we're going to edit it. There's two different watermark styles. This is a text watermark. And that's what we're going to do first. You could also employ a graphic watermark if you so choose. And we're going to do that in a minute or two. So we're going to use this text watermark, except I'm going to modify it a little bit. I'm going to leave my name on there. And I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to add um, my studio name. Now it's totally up to you what you write here. You don't have to have your name. You can just have your studio name. It, it really doesn't matter. It's totally up to you what you want written there. Now, what we start with is the font. And this really kind of bugs me about this watermark editor. You go right here under text options and you see right now it's using this Myriad Web Pro. If we click on the drop down, you can see there's hundreds of fonts. But there's no preview. <laughs> Usually when you see a drop down of fonts, to the right of the font, they'll show an example of the font so you know what you're getting. Well, unfortunately, with this watermark editor, we don't have that example. So we just have to kind of try one and see what it looks like and keep trying them and see if we see one that we like. Now. Like, that's horrible, right? Now, you know, hopefully you are familiar with the font that you know you want to use. That way, uh, it would make this go a lot quicker. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to pick this Sanvito Pro font, which is a very boring looking font. But we're going to use that for the sake of time. After the font, you have the style. Now, for this specific font, we have four different styles, regular, light, semi-bold, and bold. Some of the fonts won't have any styles outside of the default style, or they might have more than these four. So it really, it, it's kind of font specific. So you could try these out too. There's what it looks like light, there's semi-bold, and there's bold. So let's go with semi-bold only because I think you could see it a little better. Also, we could affect the size, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. The alignment. Now, this is just how the uh, lines align to each other. For example, we're left aligned now. I'm going to go to right align or to center, and you can see how it just centered the copyright Anthony Morganti to the Creative Edge photography. It didn't center the um, entire watermark in the center of the image. It just centered it like that. Or we could do 
right alignment. So we're going to do center alignment. The next is the actual color of the font. You would click right here and you would come up probably with this uh, circle, you know, color circle, and you could pick a color. Now, I recommend that you keep it a neutral color uh, because you're going to you're going to use this font on all different images. So you might have an image that's predominantly orange, let's say, and you don't want to pick an orange font. You prefer probably to have a white font or maybe a blue font, something like that. Um, so I would say to tend, you know, to keep it neutral. In this case, I'm going to keep it white. And if you click on these different choices here, you could get these different um, types of color pickers, which one you would prefer. And I'm just going to pick white. So I have a white font. The next is the shadow. And actually, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. We're going to jump down to the watermark effects because I don't think you could see the shadow too good here or too well here, I should say. All right. Under watermarks effects, we have the opacity of the watermark. You can see as I move it down, it gets less opaque. All right. So we're going to keep that up for now. The next is the size proportional and I highly recommend that you use proportional if you use fit it's just going to put the watermark humongously across the image or fill it's going to just go like crazy big like that but if you use proportional for instance I believe this image was shot with a Nikon D7000 which is a crop sensor camera if I shot this image with my Nikon D800 which is a full frame camera it'll keep this font or this this uh, watermark proportional on the image so even though the image is much bigger with my d800e it won't make the font or the I keep saying font I'm sorry it won't make the watermark look any smaller so keep it proportional you can adjust the size right here so we could make it bigger if we so choose so we're gonna leave it kind of obnoxious like that um, so proportional and then you could adjust the size with the slider. The next is the inset. This is how close you want it to the edges. Uh, with the horizontal, as I move it to the right, it moves to the right. As I move it to the left, it will move to the left. Now in this case, because it's in the bottom left-hand corner, we don't really want to move it left. Maybe we want to move it right a little bit. All right, vertical is or down. All right, so we're going to move it up. But now we have an anchor point. Right now, technically, it's in this left-hand corner. You could put it anywhere. You could put it right in the middle. You could put it in the left-hand corner. You could put it in the middle of the left, middle of the right. As you can see, anywhere you'd like it. Um, I'm going to put it right now in the upper left-hand corner, not because I want it there forever. <laughs> it's because I think I could better show you the shadow uh, uh, section here because you'll be able to see that the uh, each letter casts a shadow. And as I move opacity to the right, it will make the shadow lighter and darker. Hopefully you could see that in the video. So I'm going to leave it all the way at 100 so you could more readily see it. Now the offset actually as I move it, you can see it pulls it away from the letters or makes it closer to the letters. So let's leave it far away just so you could see what I'm doing next. The radius actually kind of more defines it, um, meaning as I move it to the right, see how it fuzzes out? If I move it to the left, it's more well defined. So, you know, you pick your happy medium there. Now the angle is like which way is the light going so you could move it around a little bit so that's what these four sliders do so let's why don't we put it more realistically maybe there yeah that's fine just like that and we're gonna jump down here and I want my um, my uh, watermark in the lower left hand corner and I want it a little smaller okay so that's how you would create your text watermark. Also, I should add, if you could rotate it if you wanted it to go sideways, you could just keep hitting these uh, rotation arrows to rotate it around. So um, 
that's really as simple as that. Now we're going to save it. So we click on save and we're going to give it a name and I'm going to go give it uh, I'm going to CEP for create, Creative Edge Photography Watermark and we're going to click create. All right, now we created a watermark. Now I want to apply it to this image and it's applied during your export. So we're going to export this raw file. We're going to go up to file export and I'm going to export it to my desktop. Um, we're going to give it a name butterfly and it's a JPEG 100 quality sRGB. Uh, let's uh, not resize it to fit. We're going to sharpen for the screen. Um, here's watermarking right here. We're going to click this checkbox then we're going to go to this drop down and we have the CEP watermark. That is what we just created. The simple copyright watermark was what we saw when we first opened that uh, create watermark dialog. It just had the copyright symbol in my name. But I want this CEP watermark right there. After export do nothing and we're going to export it. And you'll see the status bar up here is creating the JPEG and I saved it to the desktop and boy did that ding loud. And there it is right there, the butterfly. And we'll open that and you can see my watermark is on the image. So that is how you would create a text watermark and uh, use it on the image, apply it to your image. Now there is a graphic watermark and I'm going to show you that. We're going to use this file right here, this logo.png file. And one thing about this graphic watermark, you really can't create the graphic in Lightroom. You need a, a program like Photoshop to create the graphic watermark. And once you do, you would prefer to save it as a PNG file uh, because it gives you transparency and I'll show you that in a minute. So we're going to create this watermark. We're going to go up to Lightroom. In my case, now remember if you have a PC it's under Edit and we're going to go to Edit Watermarks and we're going to create a graphic watermark. So we're going to click this checkbox and immediately this box pops up to choose a file and we're going to go to my desktop and we're going to go to logo.png and this is a lousy logo. I'm not a graphic artist unfortunately so it's it's just the best I could do all right so <laughs> hopefully you're more artistic than I am and you could create a really nice graphic um, uh, like logo style watermark and use in Lightroom so anyways I loaded this uh, file in it's right here and you could see it is awful small now you could see all the text options are are grayed out. We can't use those. We're not doing a text watermark. We're doing this graphic watermark. So first thing I want to do is I want to make it bigger. Now again you don't want to use fit or fill. You just don't want to do that. So we're going to use proportional. So we're going to make it relatively obnoxious. All right. And then we have the same inset uh, options. We could move it to the right or left if I so choose and move it up a little bit. So let's keep it there. I'm going to keep it in this left hand corner. By default it will always be in the left hand corner. Um, now again you could change it around if you wanted it you know, somewhere else. But I'm going to keep it in the left hand corner. So the reason I mentioned do you want to use a PNG, you could see how it's just the lettering that is coming through in my little camera uh, because the transparency is um, is you is preserved when you're using a PNG file. If it was a JPEG, it would be white uh, back here, and my white letters wouldn't show. So I'd have to use a different color lettering. So that's just for your graphic watermark. All right, now we're going to save this, and I'm going to be very creative and just call this graphic watermark, and we're going to create. Now we have this watermark created so let's uh, export this image with the graphic watermark so we're going to go up to file export and we're going to call this butterfly 2 and one thing I probably uh, should mention in this watermarking area here on this drop down you could edit the watermarks right here if you so choose you click there and you come up with this 
you know this uh, watermark editor so you could get to that watermark editor from the export dialog as well as the menus at the top so we're going to use the graphic watermark on this one okay I'm going to turn the volume of my computer down because I have headphones on and it dinged really loud in my ear and it hurt so all right so we're going to hit export and again it's going to go and that way it dinged a lot quieter in my ear that time and it's butterfly 2 and there is my lousy graphic logo uh, on the image so that's really it it's very very simple to create these watermarks and use them in Lightroom and I hope that helps those of you that really need to put a watermark on your image so that's it for episode 15 thank you everyone that watches my videos and everyone that's so kind and shares them and likes them thank you very very much and if you haven't already I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel all right that's it I'll talk to you guys soon